It's time for Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. A look at the weirdest stories from our weirdest state. And we get right into it with a story about a Florida man slamming into a telephone pole while running from deputies who busted him for drugs during a traffic stop. He lives in Spring Hill, Florida. They caught their suspect when he smacked into a telephone pole while running away from a car that was filled with drugs. Scott Schwerian, he's 39, along with Heidi Reynolds, she's 36. Now they're kind of a cute couple. We do rank <laughs> their... <laughs> booking photos, and we always rank booking photos on a 10 scale. I'm going to give them solid sevens. Mm. Yeah. No? No. I'm going five. Wow. B.A. Ware says seven, eight. Anyway, Scott and Heidi were pulled over by deputies in the area of Toucan Trail in Spring Hill. Detectives say they saw a rolled cigar containing a green leafy substance that they identified as marijuana. You what, you're not allowed to smoke marijuana in Florida? Is that is that right, Albert? What? I didn't know that. That's a good note for the future. According to uh according to the HCSO Where are my weed smokers at? Well, here are two of them apparently. They also found a pill box with the word Xanax written on it that had eleven Alpop, uh, what is it? Uh, Alprazolam pills, isn't that Xanax? And two separate baggies with fentanyl residue. Okay, now you got. But Xanax and pot, I don't get the problem. I mean, I it, it it I don't think they should be driving with it, but can't they anyway? Deputies are, apparently there's enough of this stuff that they probably think that they were dealing it. Is that it, uh, Kamish? I think so. Deputies say the back seat passenger was later identified as Reynolds. Refused to provide detectives with their name identification. Refused to exit the vehicle. After trying several times to get her to leave the vehicle voluntarily, she was escorted out and handcuffed. While searching the vehicle, deputies said they found three syringes filled with a clear liquid that later tested positive for methamphetamines. They also found a black container with four more marijuana cigarettes. Hey, guys, they're having a party. (laughs) Relax. God, what is going on? Rolled away everywhere, don't they? I am just, well, I mean... You just don't get it, I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be too uh, permissive, but... um, then they got a new uh, search warrant. Uh, they, they, but in this time, when deputies tried to arrest Schwerian, the guy there on the left, he ran away. But he ran right into a telephone pole, which stopped him cold. I mean, that's like something out of a cartoon. They arrested him, and they arrested both of them for trafficking in meth and marijuana possession and possession of paraphernalia. Wow! Apparently he turned into like an accordion or something. You know, like the old uh, cartoons. And yeah, music. right. Exactly. <laughs> it hits the right. Hits the pole, and then he's in a, an accordion. Exactly. Wow. Meth and running don't mix. No. I see. Pounds of cannabis. Uh, twenty grams or less of cannabis is a misdemeanor punishable by a maximum sentence of one year imprisonment and a maximum fine of a thousand dollars. Possession of more than twenty grams, and you can end up with twenty-five years. Wow. God, these marijuana laws, we got to bring them. I, I, I get it, but uh, I don't know. Interesting, though. Thank you for the research. Be aware. A man brandishes a machete. This is political news and Florida news. A man brandishes a machete with Trump supporters at a Florida polling station. What? Yeah. He's 18 years old. He wasn't just motivated to vote. He was motivated to yank out his machete at a Florida polling station in an apparent attempt to harass voters who did not vote for Trump or support Donald Trump. I'd be intimidated, I'd have to say, wouldn't you? Voter intimidation, yeah. Oh, yeah. There he is. He seems happy. Caleb Williams is charged with aggravated assault on a person 65 years of age or older an improper exhibition of a firearm or dangerous weapon. It is the Neptune Police Department and the chief there, Michael Key, who said at a news conference that during the course of the investigation, 
there is footage which shows the suspect committing an additional crime of voter intimidation or suppression within the designated voting location. So one felony of the third degree of voter intimidation or suppression added now to the charges today. And it remains to the chief an open investigation. Good day, sir! Yeah, there could be more to come. So this is a very troubling situation, and he's an 18-year-old. Yeah, he's little, other... if you could zoom in, if I could zoom in a little bit. He still has his braces in his... Uh... Crazy. Yeah. He's a the young new, man who's gone the wrong. New, the new voter, right? Yeah. Yeah, and this is... Um, uh... What he's got going here is a situation. Well, the problem is that he's young, and he's got a situation. Seven other people in the group are about 16 or 17, Young men are in grave danger from all the toxic alpha male BS online, Mm -hmm. says Eichelberg. And Eichelberg is correct. There is a discourse going on. There's an incubator going on online that feeds this sort of thing. I mean, imagine being such a rabid Trump supporter at 18 years old that you would grab a machete. And if you see anyone coming near you that looks like a Harris supporter, you go after them like that. That's some scary stuff. Voting in Florida is no joke. The situation escalating when he brandishes the machete in an aggressive, threatening posture and faced off against a 71-year-old woman and a 54-year-old woman as he held the the, uh, machete over his head. We do have a booking photo of the young man, don't we, Albert? Uh, He's a... People are asking how they knew that the voters that they were intimidating were Harris supporters. It, the article says, I think they were carrying some kind of Harris signs or wearing something that indicated that they were not Trumpers. I also think there is a general kind of, uh, I'll just, and this is completely speculation, um, but I would say that there is a kind That's of- That's pure speculation. Well, let me get it, let me get it out before <laughs> you. Uh, um, the, uh, I think- Older people sometimes, the 71 and 54-year-old women, have just had enough. And they're unapologetic in their views. And they're like, hey, you know, let us go, let us go through here. You don't need to, you know what I mean? I, I'm guessing that they don't take smack talk from some 18-year-old. And, and they shouldn't. Um, that's my guess. But, that's pure speculation. Right, it is pure speculation. But uh, booking photo, I'm going to give him a, uh, an 8. He's a young guy, you know. Yeah, he's a good-looking guy. I, right. I can hear. He's got some anger in his eyes, though. Yeah, he does. He's uh-huh. got a lot in his. He's a lot going on in there, and none of it's good. And mm-hmm. finally, this: a Florida man is recovering after surviving a shark attack at the same beach where he was bitten ten years before. What? Oh, yes. Weird. He's recovering and speaking out after surviving a shark attack on the Treasure Coast. He's been bitten on this beach, now bitten twice on the same beach. I got bit, I got bit, he yelled. He thinks he was attacked by either a bull or a tiger shark. It's like the (laughs) sharpest knife you could ever imagine, he says. It is like the sharpest knife times 10, he said. It goes right through you. Wow. You know, you hear people say, if they were bitten once, I'm getting right back in the water. Like, this won't dissuade me from from surfing and doing the things I love. Well, after you get bitten twice, do you have a different opinion on that? Because I think those sharks are coming after you. Yeah. It's uh, at some point, uh, you're not out here to surf, are you? No. Uh, They would say. Uh, That (laughs) is uh, Florida, and we do have a poll going on those three stories. I'll remind you what they are. The Florida man slamming into a telephone pole as he ran from deputies. The dude brandishing the machete alongside other Trump supporters at a Florida polling station. And finally, the man who loves surfing and apparently has a thing for getting bitten by sharks, now recovering after a second shark attack in 10 years. We need to pick a favorite. We don't want to pick a favorite. I ask you, Kim. Oh, I'm going to have to go machete voting. Mm. Kim, how are you? Machete is very hard to vote against. Albert, first, what is leading in the poll, please? 
It is a tie between I I, t- I titled it the telephone pole druggies and Trump machete supporter. It's mm. it's it's going back and forth right now. The Trump machete supporter is number one. I love the deja vu shark attack because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think surfing is the problem here. I think it's the beach, and I think he has a shark that has it out for him. It's personal for the shark. He should. Oh just yeah, surf I elsewhere. never thought of that. Sure, sure. Albert, Albert, thank you. I th- yeah. yeah, same beach. Yeah. It's same beach, and the shark very much could have been the same shark. I mean, they live a long time. That's pure speculation. All right, I know. I'm just saying. Uh, I go machete just because, like, that's the Florida thing. Sure. Um, and uh, shout-out producer Calvin Wong says he tastes uh, pretty good, Kim. So uh, stalker yeah. shark, says Tammy. Yeah, kind of a, <laughs> a sort of a stalking situation. Never thought of it that way. But uh, that is Friday Fabulous Florida. This has been Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. Y'all come back now, here. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.